If you're in the Linux space, you've probably heard of a distro called Debian and know that it is committed to free and open source software and firmware. It's a great stable Linux distribution that is the base for a lot of your favorite Linux distributions. One common philosophy is to support free firmware and free open source software on the Debian distribution. It's kind of built around it, which means you have the freedom to know what kind of code exists on your system since you can see source code, as well as inspect it. Understand that you don't have telemetry or suspicious code that you wouldn't want to run on your system. Although this philosophy has been with Debian for quite a while now, to keep open source firmware, things are becoming a little more complicated in today's day and age. Debian doesn't really bother offering you proprietary drivers or firmware, but let's talk about a recent discussion that some of the maintainers of Debian and leaders have been having. So in today's ever advancing world of new hardware that seems to be released at an amazingly high pace, Debian has definitely ran into an issue that affects its end users whenever using the operating system. And right here is the problem. Firmware, what are we going to do about it? Posted by Steve, who was the Debian project leader for a while, I think in 08 and 09. The too long don't read here. Firmware support in Debian sucks and we need to change this. See my preference and rationale section below. In my opinion, the way we deal with non-free firmware in Debian is a mess and this is hurting many of our daily users. For a long time, we've been pretending that supporting and including non-free firmware on Debian-based systems is not necessary. We do not want to have to provide non-free firmware to our users and in an ideal world, we wouldn't need to. However, it's very clear that this is no longer a sensible path trying to support lots of common current hardware. So you can see how some of the leaders and maintainers here on Debian have realized the effects that not giving the option to have proprietary firmware affects its end users. It's just too hard to rely completely on the open source community to keep up with the latest and greatest in firmware and software updates because there's such a magnitude of new hardware coming out and just so many different hardware possibilities nowadays. So let's talk about resolution here. This is definitely something Steve brought up to the rest of the Debian members. And as things got going, there has been talks of a general resolution here. Some of you might not like this because you're used to Debian being free and open source, especially based around that firmware. And there's of course a hard discussion to have and a even harder decision to make. So does Debian start to allow an image for non-free or proprietary drivers? And the answer is really, well, yes, but we're kind of used to that in most distributions nowadays, especially for us that use things like Ubuntu, Pop! OS, and put in whatever other popular distributions you want to talk about. They already do this with images that are separated, right? So you could have an image that already, let's say on Ubuntu, has NVIDIA graphics drivers, right? Or with Pop! OS, they also support the same thing. There's a whole different iOS ISO file or image for installing NVIDIA proprietary drivers to make your NVIDIA graphics card work better. It's almost unusable if you don't, so you're kind of forced to on that hand. But of course, this doesn't just apply to graphics drivers. This applies to things like Wi-Fi adapters, sound, video, lots of hardware that constantly is getting updated and improved upon. Well, you're gonna need new drivers to run that. Anyways, let's talk about some of the potential resolutions here from Debian and why this may be a great idea. Also, if you're looking for a Linux checklist and cheat sheet, make sure to check out learn.savvynick.com for a download today. And let's talk about proposal A. So proposal A to what I'll call the board here includes non-free firmware packages from the non-free firmware section of the Debian archives on the official media, meaning the firmware binaries will be normally enabled by default where the system determines that they are required, it says, but where possible, we will include ways for the users to disable this at boot. 
whether that be through a boot menu, kernel command line, etc., is what they say. When the installer live image is running, we will provide information to the user about what firmware has been loaded, both free and unfree, and we will store that information on a target system such as the users will be able to find it later. And they will publish these images as official Debian media, replacing the current media sets that do not include non-free firmware packages. So basically this is option one, or as they call it, proposal number one, basically offer new images that have the built-in non-free or proprietary firmware. And depending on your system may what seems to be automatically install them. Proposal B will include non-free firmware packages from the non-free firmware section of the Debian archive. So same thing here, the firmware binaries will normally be enabled by default and the system determines if they are required. So really the same exact paragraph as we read above here in proposal B. When the installer live image or system is running, we will provide an information to the user about what firmware has been loaded both free and non-free, and we will store that information on the target system such that the user will be able to find it later. The target system will also be configured to use non-free firmware component by default in the app sources list file. Our users should receive security updates, important fixes to the firmware binaries, just like any other software installed. They will not replace the current media sets that do not include non-free firmware packages, but be offered alongside. So the big difference here is it should be plainly stated which firmware that's non-free will be installed against the open source or free firmware, and they'll keep the old and official media and include new media alongside. So you'll get multiple images. A lot of different Linux distributions use this option. So proposal B is the second option and then finally let's talk about the third and why this could be a big deal for debian users and the operating system as a whole proposal c the shortest one of them all the debian project is permitted to make distribution media the installer images and live images containing packages from the non-free section of the debian archive available for download alongside the free media in a way that the user is informed before downloading which media are the free ones. So basically this just seems to be a division in whether or not they ask you during the installation portion, or if they just go ahead and install things for you based on which image you select, or if it's installed even with the base install image, and then you get to choose whether or not you want to use the firmware. Hopefully everyone understands that. And then of course, there are people who proposed each of these ideas and then people who are backing those ideas. And it seems like with A being the most popular one currently, and Steve being the person who proposed this idea, as we talked about in his blog post, I'll put a link in the description below to both of these, but let's quickly talk about how this could potentially help people as well as Debian. Well, mainly this will help people with newer hardware and then maintainers or developers not have to develop as much firmware for that hardware since it's all already available in most cases in a proprietary version which could help speed things along and actually reach a broader audience because more hardware being included in debian would make the distribution of course reach more users who can use the debian operating system but of course this all comes at a cost of not following their own original philosophy to keep things free and open source in this stable distribution. It's a hard choice to make, but really to keep up with the times and keep up with all the varying degrees of hardware and the firmware that it takes to actually run the hardware through the operating system, I don't see the devs or the maintainers having much of a choice other than choosing a proposal that works out for most of their operating system users. Well, let me know in the comment section below what you think about all of this. Is this exciting? Will this make you use Debian if you haven't in the past or had trouble installing because you couldn't find the proper firmware for your hardware? Maybe we can dive into this more once they make a decision. Either way, thanks for stopping by and watching. I'll catch you in another video.